warm greetings to my dear students i hope you are safe and healthy at your places my name is sandeep bhatia assistant professor in the department of electronics and communication engineering at rajkumar goel institute of technology today i am going to deliver you a lecture on subject microcontroller for a merit system having subject code is kec061 so let us start with the table of contents these are the table of contents we will start with the introduction to microcontroller its applications embedded system design our subject name is microcontroller and embedded system so we need to uh, know the basics of microcontroller and embedded system after that we will review the architecture of 8051 from this topic we will go into the uh, depth of the subject after that we will learn about the concept of synchronous serial communication and at the last topic we will learn about the spi communication protocols spi basically a serial peripheral interface and uh, it is belongs to a serial communication protocol so let us start with the introduction to microcontroller basically microcontroller uh, has two words micro and second one is the controller micro represents which is very small in size and the controller means which is used to automate the process that is the uh, controls the timing and execution of the instructions so as a combination microcontroller represents a uh, 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 computer which is used to control the things so it is basically a self computer on a chip it is a smaller computer in which all the components are integrated on a same chip it this is a uh, on chip ram it has a on chip rom input output ports timers serial communication port all are integrated on the same chip if you can see in diagram cpu ram rom all the devices are configured integrated on the same chip so that's why it is called a single chip micro computer so uh, examples of microcontroller are motorola 6811 Intel 8051. This is the most prevalent microcontroller among the uh, series of microcontrollers, Zilog, Z8, and PIC microcontroller families. So basically, microcontroller are fabricated using the VLSI technology. There are various types of microcontroller available in the market based upon its size, its uh, number of bits, its uh, uh, architecture, hardware Princeton architecture, uh, uh, based upon its processing speed, etc. So this is used in applications in which cost power and space are critical because all the components are integrated on the same chip uh, hardware requirement is less so uh, cost and power consumption is also uh, less in case of a microcontroller so this is single purpose on chip micro computer now come to the next slide that is why we use a microcontroller this is a uh, question Um, most of the students are asking in our lectures uh, we use a microcontroller to reduce chip count basically uh, all the uh, components are embedded into a same chip so uh, or uh, chip count is less many application do not requires as much computing power so uh, for that applications we are prefer microcontroller over other devices it has a reduced power consumption power consumption is less because uh, uh, all the components are embedded into a same chip so this makes uh, low power consumption uh, reduced design cost it uh, uh, it is directly proportional to the hardware and uh, if the uh, hardware requirement is less obviously the cost will be less to facilitate the automation process uh, in the previous slide i have told you that um, microcontroller is basically used for automate the things automate automate the process so automation process needed for controlling the timing and sequencing of the machines so uh, this is the use of a microcontroller now coming to the next slide that is microcontroller applications there are numerous applications i am specifying a few of the applications in this slide first is the point of sale point of sale means uh, the place where the retail transaction is carried out second one is the vending machine example of vending machine is atm automated teller machines which are uh, which we are using in our day to day life after that in the telecom sector pabx bridges pabx means private automatic branch exchange uh, high end appliances day to day applications like washing machine microwave oven geyser and smart other smart applications we are using microcontrollers in the measurement testing equipments medical equipments 
in the USB key, smart card readers, in all the applications we are uh, using microcontroller, automation process, PLCs, SCADA, uh, peripheral logic controllers, etc. So, we are not limited to these applications, they are numerous applications right from the defense applications, medical equipments, uh, x-ray machines and uh, defense sector, uh, robotics, uh, in all the applications microcontroller is used. Now, coming to the next slide that is a embedded system. Our subject is basically a microcontroller for embedded system. Uh, I am, I have given you introduction about the microcontroller. Now, the question is what is embedded system? Embedded system is basically a system which is de designed for particular task that is it is a task specific. The system which is designed for a specific task and do one task only is called a embedded system. Basically, embedded system do not interact directly with the environment. As you can uh, see in this diagram, I am sketching here the environment, this is environment, this is embedded system, I am writing ES and this is the main system. So, embedded system basically a part of the main system and it do not directly in interact with the environment. For examples, uh, task specific, ta for examples, uh, printers, um, geysers, microwave ovens, washing machine, all are the, all the appliances are example of embedded system. In our day to day life, we came across many embedded system products. So, printer, keyboard, video game player, all are the examples of a microcontroller. So, in case of uh, embedded system, there is only one application software that is typically burned into RAM. So, this is the introduction of embedded system. Now, come to the next slide that is a review of 80 microcontroller architecture. From this topic, we will go more depth into the subject. So, basically, this is a 8051 microcontroller, we can also call it is a block diagram. Basically, whole the architecture are integrated on the same chip because uh, I uh, uh, because in microcontroller all the devices are embedded into a same chip it is on chip device. So, in architecture you can see uh, for CPU that is a center processing unit it is a it carry out the operations all the operations are carried out through CPU it is a brain of brain of the computer. This is 8 bit data bus 8 bit data bus a microcontroller is a 8 bit processor. So, it means that it works on 8 bit of data at a time. It has a data bus width of 8 bit. All the devices which are integrated on the microcontroller chip are connected are shared share, uh, sharing a common bus 8 bit data bus. Other one is that we have a control uh, circuits interrupts, uh, interrupts basically 6 interrupts, 3 is the external, 2 is the internal and 1 is the reset. There are 6 interrupt signals oscillatory circuit each IC every uh, IC need clock pulses for its operation. So, these clock pulses are provided through our crystal oscillator. So, basically the frequency which are producing by the crystal oscillator is 11.0592 approximately it is equals to 12 megahertz of frequency. We have on chip ROM, on chip RAM. The on chip ROM or on chip RAM means on chip means RAM, ROM or RAM are, uh, are fixed into the microcontroller. They are uh, available from the manufacturing end. In case of 8051, our ROM available is 4 kilobyte and the RAM is 128 byte. Now, next device is the timers and uh, counters. Ti there are two timers available in microcontroller T0 and T1. Each, each timer is of 16 bit. Now, the question arise microcontroller is a 8 bit processor and the timers are 16 bit. So, to execute the timers we have to we need to break the timers into two parts T L 0, T H 0, T H T sorry T L 0, T L 1 and T H 1 each of 8 bits. So, now we can after break up we can execute the timers. We have a one serial communication port, either we are transmitting the data or, or receiving the data. So, we have, a, uh, we have a serial communication port for this. We have four input output ports P0, P1, P2 and P3. Each port is of 8 bit wide, each port is of 8 bit wide. So, total of we have 32 bits. We have a bus control circuitry to carry out the bus operations. 
Now these are the features of 8051 microcontroller. First feature is it is a 8 bit microcontroller originally de uh, developed by Intel, 19, uh, Intel in 1980. Intel was the first company which introduced microcontroller 8051. We have it has total of 40 pins. It is a 40 pin IC, basically called DIP package, dual in line package. It has 40 pins 1 to 20, 21 to 40. It has a address bus of 16 bit, address bus A02, A15. This is address bus and a data bus is of 8 bit that is from D0 to D7. It has 4 kilobytes of internal ROM, it has 128 bytes of internal ROM. These are on chip, these are on chip. We have 32 bidirectional input output ports in the previous uh, uh, slide. I have discussed that key we have four ports P02, P3. Each port is of 8 bits. So, uh, we have total of 32 pins dedicated for this purpose out of the 40 pins. We have two timers T0 and T1 each of 16 bit. So, coming to the next slide more features of 8051 we have six interrupt here they are writing three internal two external one reset interrupt is also available in 8051 the total of six interrupt we have a 16 bit program counter and data pointer what program counter does program counter uh, point out the next instruction point out address of the next instruction to be executed by the microcontroller we have a data pointer as well we have a 64 kilobytes of program memory and data memory. Memory is extend extendable, on chip memory is available is 4 kilobyte and 128 byte of RAM, but it can be extend extendable up to a 64 kilobyte. So, uh, it has operating frequency of 12 megahertz, I have uh, told in the previous uh, slide that uh, 12 megahertz of frequency is generated by the crystal oscillator it generate 12 megahertz frequency which is needed for the execution of the microcontroller. We have a plus 5 volt regulated DC power supply. Uh, so, basically in a nutshell we can say that all the components RAM, ROM, input output port, one serial communication board, timers, ADC, DAC etcetera all are integrated on the same chip which makes it perfect to, do, uh, to use uh, microcontroller in most of the applications. Now, coming to the next slide that is a concept of synchronous serial communication. Here there are two words synchronous and the second one is serial communication. What is synchronous? Synchronous means which is synchronized. In this type of communication both the receiver and the transmitter shares a common clock signal that is why it is called a, a, a synchronous communication. But in case of a asynchronous communication, there is no common clock signals available in between the sender and the receiver. Serial communication, um, uh, communication means that we are, com uh, we are communicating serial pulses that is bit by bit operation is possible in serial communication. In parallel communication, we cannot transmit uh, data bit by bit, it carry out a parallel communication. So, we can say that synchronous serial communication explains a serial communication protocol in which data is sent in a continuous stream at constant rate, data is sending continuously. Synchronous communication protocols require that the clocks in the transmitting and receiving devices should be shared a common clock signal and data is transmitted at the same rate. They are synchronized, transmitter and, uh, and receiver both are synchronized, they are sharing common clock signals at the same rate. Here no, start and, uh, sto uh, so, sorry, no start and stop bits are required. In case of asynchronous communication, we need start or stop bits, but in case of synchronous communication, there is no start or stop bits required. So, uh, so uh, the data can be sent from the uh, transmitter to the receiver at a faster rate. More data can be sent uh, passed over the circuit than asynchronous serial communication. Start bit represent the start of the pulses and stop represent the stop of the pulses. So, in our SPI I2C protocol we are using serial communication. Now, coming to the next slide uh, more about the synchronous serial communication. So, we have seen that uh, we are transmitting pulses at a continuous rate from the sender to the receiver. This diagram represents that uh, we are transmitting there is no gap present in between the pulses. In case of synchronous communication there is no gap, pre uh, gap present between the pulses. So, that it makes it more efficient more reliable than asynchronous communication. So, here you can see that uh, bit stream of data is tr transmitted from the sender to the receiver 
and there is no gap present between the pulses. So, synchronous and asynch uh, asynchronous communication protocols if we uh, it further uh, divided into SPI and I2C. In our sub, uh, syllabus, we will study that only two communication protocols among the various communication protocol that is SPI serial peripheral interface and the second one is the I2C that is the inter integrated circuit pronounced as I squared C or some people called it as I2C. Other <coughs> synchronous communication protocols uh, available like CAN, CAN bus, USART, RS-232 and SATA, but in our subject we will study only our two synchronous com, uh, serial communication protocols that is SPI and I2C. Let us start with the SPI communication protocol. SPI basically stands for serial peripheral interface. It is a synchronous serial communication interface which is specifically used for short distance communication. So, it is used in most of the embedded system for example, SD card reader modules, RFID card reader modules, reader modules in these we are using SPI communication. SPI devices communicate in full duplex mode, full duplex mode means both the transmitter and the receiver uh, are transmitted to pulses at the same time, at the same time uh, they can transmit or receive the data. That is why it is works on the full duplex communication mode, it is using a master slave architecture usually with a single master, in some cases we can use a multiple master as well. So, master why it is called a master because all the operations are controlled by the master, it is a controller which are controlling the things which are communicate with the slave. So, we have a, uh, in our system we may have one slave or multiple slave possible. So, basically uh, master is called a controller and the slave uh, are called a peripherals. So, in some system we may have a multiple slave devices, multiple um, masters as well. So, so to which to which uh, slave um, my micro uh, master have to communicate it is through the chip select line, this is active loans uh, uh, active low line. So, for particular slave it is active low. So, sometime, sometime it is called a slave select line, chip select lines sometimes called as slave select line. Now, coming to the next slide, this is this block diagram represents the SPI communication protocol. Here you can see there is a single master and multiple slaves. Master is called a controller, they are controlling the things, they are communicating with the uh, slaves. In some system we may have a single slave or multiple slave as well. In this diagram you can see that there are four signals, four signals on the bus. First one is the system clock, MOSI means master out slave in, Se third one is the master in slave out and the fourth one is the slave select lines. For particular slave there is a individual select lines, SS1 belongs to a slave uh, first slave, SS2 belongs to a second slave and SS3 belong to, belongs to a third slave. So, all are communicating through the bus architecture. MOSI means master out slave is means when master configured as a slave uh, as configured uh, it works as the output master out means master is sending the data to the slave and SI means slave in means slave are getting the data. So, as a whole it is MOSI that is master out slave in M MISO, MISO means master in slave out. So, master is works as an input and slave works as an output. Okay. So, in this case slave is sending the data to the master. Now, coming to the next slide, as already in previous slide as already I explained that there are four communicating lines in between the master and the slaves. First is the serial clock, it is output from the master because serial uh, because clock pulses is needed for the execution of the slaves. So, the direction of the serial clock is from the master to the slave, master to the slave not from the serial, uh, slave to the master. So, it is output from the master, it is output from the master. After the MOSI as already I told uh, told you that this is master out slave in data output from master, M M M I S O master in slave out data output from slave and uh, 
chip select line it is also called a slave select line it is active low so this is output from the master because slave select lines is used for the selecting the slaves so this is output from the master to indicate that data is being sent from the master to the slave so mosi on a master connects to mosi on a slave and miso on a master connect to a miso on a slave students we are studying the architecture in this architecture you can see we have a single master spi master and we have multiple slaves there are three slave slaves here uh, more than three slaves possible so we have basically we in a spi we have four communicating lines first one is the s clock s clock means the system clock second one is the mosi mosi means the master out slave in miso means master in slave out ss1 means slave select line 1 similarly ss2 means slave select line 2 and ss3 means slave select line 3 so total it has four signals s clock mosi miso second and it is basically a can be uh, represented as a single signal that is slave select so in this diagram you can see that master that is called a controller it is controlling the things it is sending signals to the particular slave and to which slave it has to communicate for that particular slave the chip select line or slave select line is low for example for uh, spi slave uh, this one if ss2 pin is low then this is uh, starts communicating with the master so we can say that Uh, this bus control unit control all the operations so spi communication protocols let us start with the next slide it has a four signals so let us start explain each one of uh, them s clock means serial clock that is output from the master for uh, we know that to uh, for each ic need some clock pulses to execute so s serial clock pulses are provided by the master to the slave master to the slave so this is output from the master slave are getting the clock pulses uh, uh, by the master so second one is the m o s i m means master o means output s means slave and i means input m o s i means that when master is configured as an uh, uh, as a configured then it works as an output device it is uh, provides output to the particular slave si means that slave works as an input when slave is configured it, uh, it is getting the data to so, mo si means master out slave in data output from the master to the slave after that we have a miso 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 means that master in slave out it is a reverse operation of the mo si must when configured as a master is configured it uh, it is works as an input device they are uh, providing the data to the Uh, they are getting the data and so means that slave output when the slave out uh, slave is configured it it works as an output device so in miso data is sending by the sending back by the uh, slave to the master after that we have a chip select lines slave select line chip select lines or slave select line mean it has same meaning it is basically active low signal for particular slave when it is active low uh, uh, master starts communicating with the slave so this is basically a output from the master device to indicate that data is being sent by the controller uh, that is called a master to the slave after that we have a uh, so uh, we can say that mosi on a master connects to ms mosi on a slave and miso on a master connects to miso on a slave so this is the uh, basically a uh, explanation of the architecture of spi communication protocols the advantage of spi is that uh, data communication rate is faster in spi we can uh, transfer data at a faster rate more data can be sent as compared to other uh, communication protocols but the disadvantage of uh, using spi is that in spi hardware requirement is more more hardware requirement means more is the cost more is the space uh, con uh, consumed by the spi device now coming to the next slide Uh, in this light we can say that there are four pins used already we uh, have uh, discussed uh, in the previous slide we have discussed that uh, there are four pins available two pins are dedicated for 
एम आई एस ओ एन एम ओ एस आई दैट इज अ मास्टर इन स्लेब आउट एंड अ मास्टर आउट स्लेब इन वी हैव सीन दैट इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर एंड वन पिन इज फिक्स फॉर क्लॉक आई सी नीड क्लॉक पल्सिस टू एग्जीक्यूट सो दीज क्लॉक पल्सिस आर प्रोवाइडेड बाय द मास्टर टू द पेरीफेरल डिवाइसिस टू विच इट हैज टू कम्युनिकेट एंड वन डेटा पिन इज डेडिकेटेड टू अ स्लेव डिवाइस सो टोटल वी हैव अ फोर पिन इन एस पी आई सो एस एस वन एस एस टू आर डेटा पिन फॉर थ्री स्लेव डिवाइसिस दिस इज अ टाइमिंग डायग्राम विच रिप्रेजेंट्स द ऑपरेशन ऑफ अ वर्किंग ऑफ अ एस पी आई प्रोटोकॉल्स फर्स्ट सिग्नल रिप्रेजेंट्स द चिप सेलेक्ट सिग्नल इज इट इज बेसिकली अ एक्टिव लो सिग्नल एक्टिव लो मीन्स डैट वेन इट इज एक्टिव लो इट द देयर इज विल बी अ कम्युनिकेशन इन बिटवीन द मास्टर एंड द स्लेव सो यू कैन सी डैट वेन बिफोर इट गोइंग लो वेन इट इज हाई देयर इज नो ऑपरेशन बट वेन इट वेन एट द फॉलिंग एज दैट इज फ्रॉम द हाई टू द लो मास्टर एंड स्लेव स्टार्ट कम्युनिकेटिंग विथ ईच अदर एंड वेन द चिप सेलेक्ट लाइन इज लो फॉर पर्टिकुलर स्लेव ए सिस्टम क्लोक स्टार्ट सेंडिंग पल्सिस फ्रॉम द मास्टर टू द पर्टिकुलर पेरीफेरल डिवाइस एंड you can see here at the rising at each rising edge of the clock at each rising edge of the clock as uh, mosi that is master is sending data from the uh, uh, to, from the uh, through the system bus to the particular slave so at the rising uh, rising edge we are communicating from the master to the slave and at the filing edge here you can see that at the filing edge the data is sent back from the particular slave device to the master and last one is the sto miso that is the uh, serial uh, miso means master in slave out so uh, this represents the operation in the rising edge and this represents the operation in the falling edge so in lecture 1 we have discussed uh, one communication protocol that is spi other mic uh, other uh, serial communication protocol is also available that is i2c and uh, uh, some other microcontrollers are also available which we will study in our uh, uh, further lectures so i hope you have enjoyed the lecture thanks for your patience